In less than 14 hours, Hurricane Milton will make landfall on the western coast of Florida. Winds will be fierce at well over 100 miles per hour, with storm surges reaching up to 15 feet and up to 18 inches of rain. It's looking like the storm of the century. I'm here with leaders of my administration who are in the front lines preparing for this storm and will brief me in our latest efforts. To save lives and livelihoods, I want to emphasize a few things. First, many communities in Hurricane Milton's path do not have a moment to catch their breath between Helene and Milton. Two historic stir storms in two weeks. I want to thank everyone who has followed local guidance to evacuate ahead of the landfall. I know it's really tough leaving behind your home, your belongings, everything you own, but I urge everyone and Hurricane Milton's path to follow all safety instructions as we head to the next 24 hours. It's a matter of, literally, a matter of life and death. Second, for the last week, my team has done everything possible to prepare for this storm. I immediately approved an emergency declaration in Florida and a Seminole tribe in Florida. I also served search and rescue teams, water, food, power generators, ambulances to the region. In my direction, Administrator Criswell will be in the State Emergency Operations Center in Florida tonight. And Kamala and I are going to keep pressure on the company so prices stay stable on gasoline, flights, and goods people need. Finally, we're teaming up with state and local officials to support impacted communities. I spoke with the Florida Governor DeSantis, with Mayor Tamper Castor, Mayor, the, the Tampa Mayor, the Clearwater Mayor, Rector, and the, and the Pinellas County Chairwoman, Peters. I offer them everything we need, everything we have, everything they need. And I made it clear to them they should reach out if there's anything more they need. I gave them my personal phone number here at the White House to contact me directly if that's necessary. Let me close with this. I want to thank the governors of all the affected areas over the last couple weeks. Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Virginia. You know, uh, We've been in constant contact, and they've been very thankful and appreciative of the help the federal government is providing, and I'm appreciative of all they're doing as well. And I've told them to contact me with anything else they need. We have made available an unprecedented number of assets to deal with this crisis. We're going to continue to do so until the job is done. But now I want to be clear about something. For the last few weeks, there's been a reckless, irresponsible, and relentless promotion of disinformation and outright lies that are disturbing people. It's undermining confidence in the incredible rescue and recovery work that has already been taken and that will continue to be taken. And it's harmful to those who need help the most. There is simply no place for this to happen. Former President Trump has led the onslaught of lies. Assertions have been made that property is being confiscated. That's simply not true. They're saying people impacted by these storms will receive $750 in cash and no more. That's simply not true. They're saying in the money is needed to, for, the, in the, for this crisis is being diverted to migrants. What a ridiculous thing to say. It's not true. Now the claims are getting even more bizarre. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a congresswoman from Georgia, is now saying the federal government is literally controlling the weather. We're controlling the weather. It's beyond ridiculous. It's got to stop. In moments like this, there are no red or blue states. There's one United States of America where neighbors are helping neighbors. Volunteers and first responders are risking everything, including their own lives, to help their fellow Americans. State, local, and federal officials are standing side by side. Let me repeat, no one should make the American people question whether their governments will be making sure that this is acting around strikes. They'll be there. We will. I'm not saying that the government created Hurricane Helene. What I am saying is that the government has been manipulating the weather since 1947. What first caught my attention with Helene was the shift in the storm's projected path. One day, it looked like it would hit my town. The next day, it had shifted east. I then noticed an odd flight path of NOAA-42, the aircraft being flown, a Lockheed Martin Orion P-3. This prompted me to look at previous uses for the P-3, where I discovered that they were used in the 1960s to manipulate Hurricane Camille in a, quote, weather war on Cuba. 
Now I know this sounds out there, but as we begin to see more and more the terrible things our government has done in the past, is it really so far-fetched? Here are the projections from the 23rd of September. A large spread traveling the Alabama-Georgia line and ending up in Illinois. On the 24th, projections shift slightly east and the storm is projected to finish in Indiana. On the morning of the 25th, the path shifts back west and shows to be finishing in western Kentucky. That evening, a P-3 conducts a six-hour operation inside the developing storm. The next morning, on the 26th, the path shows to have shifted slightly east again, now finishing in northwestern Tennessee. The evening of the 26th, the same P-3 conducts operations throughout Hurricane Helene as it makes landfall, and the storm's actual path shifts further east, finishing in northeastern Tennessee. What would the government's motivations possibly be to modify a storm? That, I don't know. But I do believe that if we can maintain our republic long enough, time will eventually tell. Question. Fox News alert, Hurricane Helene wreaked havoc on North Carolina. The state will be reeling from the damage for years. And the storm just isn't impacting people's lives. It's affecting the election. Last night, the North Carolina Board of Elections announced changes to voting rules in counties impacted by Hurricane Helene. And some people are concerned. Senior political correspondent Kevin Cork is here. Kevin. Evening, Jesse. They are talking about major changes in the voting process. Now, this is, they say, designed to help displaced voters in the Tar Heel State not only cast their ballots, but also make sure they have their voices heard this November. However, some Republicans are expressing deep reservations about the plan because of concerns about voter integrity. Now, the changes were approved by unanimous vote by the bipartisan board coming just 10 days before early voting begins in the battleground state and even as mail-in voting is already underway. Now, a couple of the changes I want to tell you about, including this, voters in the 13 counties that have been heavily affected by Hurricane Helene will now have more ways to obtain and deliver absentee ballots. By the way, more storms coming, possibly. Voters in those counties will have longer to apply for absentee ballots. They'll be allowed to drop their ballots off anywhere in the state, not just in their home county. There will also be teams that will be sent to storm relief centers to help register more voters and, you guessed it, collect more ballots. What's more, the county boards will also be able to, by a bipartisan majority, hire poll workers from other counties and then move them all around the state to ensure there are enough experienced workers at each voting site. Now, the problem is, say critics, Jesse, uh, we don't know where they're going to draw these poll workers from. And with ballots being able to be dropped off anywhere in the state, how can anyone accurately contest voter turnout discrepancies, say, in different counties? And keep this in mind, North Carolina was one of the last states to report back in 2020. It took them 10 days to certify the general election, despite being a relatively small state. Now, I can also add this very quickly. President Trump's team, the Trump Vance campaign, issued a statement tonight asking for more access for North Carolinians. They say it is super important that the people who've already suffered from the storm don't lose their right to take part in this important election. And uh, big amen. Uh, for that, Jesse. I don't know if I love or hate these late changes in the election law, but I know Mark Elias, the Democrat election lawyer who specializes in shenanigans, loves it. So that makes that me a little suspicious, but who knows what's going to happen. It could work out. Yeah. We'll cover it as it unfolds. Question. Stunning to monitor the media's lack of interest in the whole Maui story. I've been in this business for 30 years. I'm stunned, but I'm not surprised. The incident seems to be the story here, right? But the true story, the media knows it is not allowed to tell. Is it a coincidence that the Maui police chief is the same man who was in charge in Las Vegas during that massacre that killed 58 people? Is it a coincidence that the Maui property, owned by million and billionaires, wasn't touched by the flames while homes of the locals all burned? What she fails to also mention is how the media hasn't even once interviewed a grieving parent. Not a single parent looking for their children. Not a single interview with a child. Not a single interview with the schools. Was it a coincidence that the largest system of outdoor emergency sirens in the world never made a sound as the fire devoured Lahaina? 
was it a coincidence that at the same time, very same time, all the water was turned off? Was it a coincidence that police were ordered to block off streets and to funnel all the cars trying to escape? Think about this coincidence. That governor also signed an emergency proclamation on July 17th, three weeks before the fire, about housing of all things. Is it a coincidence that the government put up a black fence around Lahaina or that the FAA grounded all drones from flying over the affected areas? Is it a coincidence that since at least 2011 there have been plans to make Maui the first smart city run by 100% renewable energy? And that it must be a coincidence then that the locals whose homes did not burn are now being evicted from their property. And of course, a total coincidence that all the fact checkers who are checking these facts who say everything I just told you is just a coincidence are also owned and run by BlackRock. Question. Between Kings Mountain and Chimney Rock, North Carolina is the largest lithium deposit in the world. And the rights are owned by Albemarle Global. And on September the 24th, they actually applied for federal and state permits to redirect and reconstruct their mining operation between Kings Mountain and Chimney Rock. So uh, Albemarle is owned by mostly by stockholders, um, Vanguard and BlackRock Group. Well, guess who the biggest investor in BlackRock and Vanguard is? Douglas Emhoff. Kamala Harris's husband. So, Albemarle is uh, home headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. And when these uh, permits get approved, they're proposing $250 billion billion yearly in mining. Douglas Emhoff's stock holdings just went up substantially. And guess who is the final approval for the permits? That would be our lovely BP. So, as I said, I'm going to post about six or seven, maybe eight pictures at the end of this video, and you can see for yourself. It's a disgrace. The loss of life for money. So, please... I beg you, if you have any heart and any love for life and liberty and the wrongdoing that's going on right now, please like, comment, and repost this to everybody. Everybody. Thank you. Question. Can somebody tell me why the entire state of Wyoming is on fire right now and nobody even knows this? Multiple counties have been affected with over 100,000 acres on fire with zero containment. Now you're asking yourself, what is going on with these natural disasters and smart cities and land grabs? You guys, I looked into this one. This is the biggest one yet. First, let's start with where the biggest fires are, starting with the Elk Fire with over 74,000 acres currently on fire. Elk is located in the Sheridan County and the other counties on fire is the Telton County and the Fremont County with 58,000 acres combined with zero containment. This list shows all the fires that happened this year in Wyoming from the start date and containment date and what caused them. Some were caused by human activity and some, like this one, was caused by lightning, but I'll reserve judgment on that. But here's a weird thing about the last two. So the Telton County and the Fremont County actually merged together on October 5th, but started in August 16th. 
Now, it's not so much that the fires merge, that happens all the time, and these two counties are next to each other, but it's the timing. It's two months later, and you had multiple containments in between these fires. Now, you could say this is a land grab, with Wyoming being number six with the most land owned by the federal government with over 46%, but it's way more nefarious than that. Now, you remember that first county I showed you, Sheraton, with over 70,000 acres on fire? Yeah, they just found the biggest deposit of rare earth minerals worth 37 billion dollars now the question is does the government own this land it says here the sheraton county wyoming is a governmental entity that operates under the jurisdiction of the state of wyoming but it is not owned by the u.s government now another question is can the government take this land it says the government can take private property during a disaster under the power of eminent domain which allows for the acquisition of the property for public use provided that the owner is compensated however this typically occurs when the property is needed for emergency response efforts oh like a fire caused by lightning got it Oh, it doesn't stop there. So the company Wyoming Rare got $450 million from the feds for their Hollow Creek project because they found even more rare earth minerals on the other side of Wyoming. This is a tens of billions of dollars play because they said it's so big that it could be a world leader of how much minerals they have. You really have to ask yourself, how many coincidences have to line up before it's not a coincidence? Question. What do the states in the storm zone need, Mr. President? Sorry? What do the states in the storm zone, what do they need after what you saw today? Oh, in the storm zone? Yes, sir. I'm wondering what storm you're talking about. The, uh, they're getting everything they need. And uh, they're very happy across the board. This is the veteran... FEMA inspector. Yes. I have a dire warning to those that are going to take the money. There is a contract mm -hmm. at the beginning when, when the inspector gets there, before he starts inspecting, there's a contract that the claimant has to sign. Practically illegible. The, the writing is so small that 12 years ago I had to use a magnifying glass and that's when my eyes were good. In that contract, if you do not pay the money back, it is a loan. What? A loan. And even if it's just a dollar or $750, if you don't pay it back, they have the right to seize all of your property. That's insane. The $750 that they're saying that they're going to give people, that's a loan? It's in the contract to receive it? Yes, there is a contract that you sign before the inspector starts his inspection. You have to sign off on it, but there is a contract inside, and they even have, even for people that could not speak English, there was a translator um, that I would speak into it, and it would speak to them in Spanish or translate it in writing, and they have to sign this contract for the inspector to even start the inspection. Hmm. If you wow. take that money and don't pay it back, they can seize your property at any point after a year. That's crazy. Well, thanks for the heads up. Uh, so folks, uh, heed his, his message here. If there's anything that you got to sign or contract before you receive any assistance, make sure that you are well aware of. I'm going to try my best. I've been trying to make this video for the last 15 to 20 minutes. It just, just blows my mind, you know, the level of depravity some of these people are going to go to. So, there is a FEMA man who came on and explained something very serious about the $750 that you guys don't know and that they're not going to tell you. And unless you have a magnifying glass in the contract that they're going to sign during your inspection, you'll never see it. So you're going to hear it from me and hopefully from everybody else who is going to share this shit around. The $750 is a loan. It's not free. They're not giving it to you. It's a loan. And if you don't pay back that $750 loan within a year, they're going to seize your property. So, 
do not take the money. Doesn't matter how hard you you feel life is right now. Don't take it. It is a carrot on the string. They're trying to bait you. Don't take it. Do not take it. One thing that you're going to notice, folks, is they're not giving that money to people who have a little bit of money. They're not giving it to people who have jobs. They're giving it to the welfare people who have nothing, who have absolutely nothing. And they're going to take advantage of these people first. Hey guys, for those that don't know, I'm at the foothills of the Western North Carolina mountains and um, everybody in my area that I've talked to, including myself, who applied for the $750 assistance payment from FEMA has been denied. Okay. Yeah. They've denied us. Okay. So here we sit. We've thrown out all of our food because we had no power for five, six days. Some still are without power. Here we set limited resources in the store and they have denied our $750 resource check. So, yeah. How do you like that? ¿Y por cuánto tiempo han estado quedándose aquí en el Rojo Hotel? Julio. ¿Cuántos meses es eso? Como siete meses. ¿Y han tenido que pagar alquimiento? No, no, no. Nada. No he pagado nada. ¿Es, es 100% gratis? Sí, sí. ¿Y le dan almuerzo, desayuno? Sí. No sí, le dan con el niño, personales, no dan pañales, lo que necesiten ellos. ¿Y ahí en el hotel hacen limpieza de las puertas? Sí, 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 sí hacen. Sí, todos los días hacen limpieza, cambian las sábanas, hacen aseo. ¿Todos los días hacen eso? Sí, sí todos los días. ¿Han podido poder conseguir trabajo ustedes? No, no, no. no. no yo no. Si ustedes tuvieran un problema de medicina, ¿cómo podrían recibir ayuda con eso? Bueno, eh, con una tarjeta, la, la del seguro de Medi Medicare. Y la Metroplu. Nosotros la tenemos la Metroplu y eso nos abarca el seguro que nosotros necesitamos para los niños y también nosotros nos beneficiamos de eso. ¿Se sintieron apoyados gracias a nuestro presidente Joe Biden? Bueno, sí. Sí, porque... Eh, si no estamos trabajando y nada, él es el que nos está ayudando prácticamente. Question. Peter Ducey here, outside the West Wing of the White House, where this week, one of my questions about foreign aid versus hurricane relief was called misinformation. President Biden is fond of saying, show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If he's got money for people in Lebanon right now, without Congress having to come back. What does it say about his values? There's not enough money right now for his people values, in North Carolina who his, need it. That's not misinformation. Wait, no, that is, we, your whole your whole premise of the question is misinformation, sir. Excuse what you don't, me? yes, yes, Which it's part? misinformation. I've got the information right here. The vice president is posting on social media about $157 million in additional assistance to the people of Lebanon. President Biden is posting about how the Small Business Administration's disaster loan program is gonna run out of funding if Congress does not come back. To a lot of people watching these briefings, a taxpayer dollar is a taxpayer dollar is a taxpayer dollar. That is not misinformation, that is a fact. Question. President Joe Biden has announced new defense support for Taiwan. Biden has approved 567 million U.S. dollars in new equipment, services and training, the highest amount of such funding on record. Now, Beijing has condemned Washington's continued sale of weapons to Taipei, and Taiwan has been complaining about a growing backlog of delayed weapons deliveries from the U.S. Question. Our military is great. And then I go and woke. You could put them in a woke room and scream at them for two and a half years. They'd walk out and say, let me at them. You know, these are not woke people. But I had this little clip and I thought you'd find it very interesting. It's the military of the past. Let's call it the Trump military compared to the very woke military that we have now. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Happy 
Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. And actually, let's declare it a summer of pride. So you're a killer? Sir, yes, sir! Let me see your war face. Sir, you got a war face? Ah! That's a war face. Now let me see your war face. Ah! Bullshit. You didn't convince me. Let me see your real war face. Ah! you have done something differently during the past four years? There is not a thing that comes to mind. この問題の回答権はありません。There we go. Wow. So that is new video from Great. earlier from Pahokee. That's a confirmed tornado on the ground right there. You can see. Wow. It's huge. Impressive. Huge. And you can see the debris. Just, yeah. Just spinning there. It's on the ground.、That、you can see that clearly on our on camera. It's going to be a wild afternoon, everybody. Oh yeah, it is. It's very active. Look at that! Just... Look at that! Col- look at that column, Vanessa. Wow. So that is from Pahokee.、Uh, we do have other images as well. We'll work that with you to get that on air.、Um, yeah, that video is from、um, Pahokee. That was a storm that is now located in Port Mayaka、um, th- um, this afternoon.、Um, it is 12:24, and that tornado warning will、um, likely be extended if that continues to hold. And it looks, looks like, like it's, it's going to hold. <laughs> It's I'm not laughing at it. It's been, it. it's been remarkable how it's held. We're, we've seen things in this weather year that we've never seen before, and this is just one more example of that. And、um, it's, it's kind of like the new situation now. So、yeah. when you're seeing tornadoes like this in South Florida, granted we have a, you know, a, a very strong major hurricane off the shoreline. I mean, it's still 200 miles、uh, away from, or 150 miles away from landfall over Sarasota, but we're seeing this fierce kind of tornado here. And in- Our light's not bright enough to see how far out it goes, but I don't see any heat for as far as I can see. Winds in the east, mist coming in, like something is brewing and about to begin. Can't put me finger on what lies in store, but I feel what's to happen. All happened before. By now, everyone's heard about what's going on in the western part of Carolina, eastern Tennessee, Florida, Georgia. Donate, please donate what you can.、Um, try to find a nonprofit. To donate to a church, 
local PD, a lot of those are, are taking donations, sheriff's departments. I know my department is running a bunch of stuff to the western part of the state to help donate. But please do not donate to FEMA. They are hindering a lot of what people are trying to accomplish out in the western part of the state. FEMA doesn't understand that these Appalachian people are built differently. I am very familiar with them. They are not going to stand by idly and have government officials tell them what to do. FEMA's playing a game of FAFO because free men don't ask for permission. Again, please donate and help these people out. They need us now more than ever. Well, I don't know who these are, but I'm about to get to work, and I'll ask for forgiveness later. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands, strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand, oh, I've been running from the law. wondering like why do they not care how bad she is they don't care because they're not worried i feel like the machine is at work getting everything in place for a repeat of 2020 mm -hmm. and they're placating us and keeping us busy i go back to that time magazine article you know that chronicled the secret cabal of media business and government interests aligning to change voter laws raise millions to recruit democrat poll workers censor information I don't want to miss that again. And I get the feeling that, you know, I don't want to see in February 2025 a piece in yeah. time that says how we did it again, mm. how we managed to rig all the systems for a win while the little losers were busy focusing on how stupid and brain dead our candidate was. The joke's on them.